Hello, beautifuls. Let's talk about how to make big sales without being salesy, sleazy, or slimy. Because I know that if you're here and you're watching this, you're a high achiever. You're willing to do what it takes to get the job done. You want to build that business that you're passionate about. And I also know that you're probably feeling really weird about sales or maybe unclear about sales or maybe like you're feeling stuck and nervous and maybe even like really gross about sales. And so it's keeping you from selling, right? It's keeping you from making the money that you want. And a lot of times I think that when we start businesses online, we come into this space feeling like, oh, if I just put up a website or if I just put up a Facebook page, then people will find me and they'll throw themselves at me. Pogo, stop getting into the herbs. I'm in my, my outdoor office today, a little backlit, but don't care. Happy to be here with all of you because it's a gorgeous day out. And so here's the thing. When we are feeling nervous, stuck, gross, afraid of sales, afraid of being visible, afraid of coming off wrong, afraid of annoying people, afraid of any of those things, it's going to hold us back from making the money that we want to be making in our businesses. And so what I want to talk to you about is how to make a shift in the way that you think about sales and in the way that you actually do sales so that you can start making some big bucks around here. This is something that I work with all of my clients on because frankly, most of us come into our businesses having had some kind of sales trauma, if you will. Like I have a client who was sold to in a really bullying, really disempowering way. And so she was terrified to make sales, terrified to offer sales, terrified to have sales conversations because she didn't know any other way and she definitely didn't want to come across like that. So if you're joining us live or on the replay, I'd love for you to say hello. And I'd love for you to maybe share a word or two that describes how you feel about sales. Or about your experience with sales. All right, this is jumping a little bit. Is it moving? No? Okay. So what is has your experience with sales been? Has it been like you hate the way that you've been sold to, or you're really uncomfortable with the way that people are teaching you to sell, or it just isn't working? Like which of those things or all of them maybe are true for you? Because what I know is I make consistent five figure months and I sell in a way that doesn't feel pressured, that doesn't feel gross, that doesn't feel slimy. And that has my clients coming back to work with me and to buy from me over and over and over again. All right. That's what we're breaking down here. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the surprising, surprising reason you might not be selling. Okay, the surprising reason that you might not be selling, um, and it's this, it's that your definition of sales isn't supporting the way that you want to be in the world. Because as high achievers, we will go and do whatever we believe is going to work. We are, we are going to figure it out, right? But I think what we're a lot of times we get stuck is like if we um, are told to do something that we're uncomfortable with or we've had a bad experience, then we avoid it because it's just not, it doesn't feel right to us, right? Debbie says she doesn't like the way she's told to sell, right? Happens so often that we're given some, some one size fits all plan. And a lot of times it's numbers, right? Like I just need to, invite five and then next month they need to invite five more, help five or help three or do this thing every day or, you know, whatever. Connect with this many people, PM this many people, you know. And there is no one size fits all solution to 
successful sales. Any particular strategy is going to work for some people and not for others. And guess what? I have the personality that's the least likely to be a successful salesperson, the least likely. I'm very sensitive, I'm introverted, I am intuitive, and so I'm always really aware of what other people are thinking, and the last thing that I would ever wanna do is be a bully or push someone around or like try to make them do something that they don't want to do just for me to get money. That feels terrible. If I was going to do that, then, um, you know, I would be in some job where I didn't care what I was doing as long as I was making a ton of money. And that is not me, right? It's why I've started my own businesses from scratch is to help people. And that's probably why you have started your business too, is because you want to help people and you also want to receive rewards for that, right? Financial monetary rewards. So here's the thing. It's very likely that your definition of sales is what's keeping you feeling stuck. What do I mean by that? If your definition of sales is like that old school kind of like pressured, slimy, sleazy, whatever way, where people are selling you something you don't want or need, then that's, that's the frame, that's the attitude that you're going to take. Oh my gosh, no one really actually wants this, but I'm supposed to sell and I have to sell because I need to make money in my business. Oh, it feels so bad, right? Nothing is fun about that. So like when you can psych yourself up to doing that, if you can, then you're going to do it half-heartedly. Then you're going to um, not feel good about engaging with objections or reasons why not that people have. Then you're not going to know what to say, when to say, right? Then you're not going to know how to show up, how to make the offer. Maybe you just avoid being visible completely because it feels so bad, right? So I'd love to know if any of those things feel true for you. Are you afraid that people are going to feel pressured when you sell? Are you afraid that people are going to feel like you're sleazy or slimy or like taking advantage of the relationship if you have a friend or you're in a community already with someone where you have a pre-existing relationship? The thing is, I know that if you're watching this, you actually have something to sell that people want. And how do I know that? Because I know that you are different. I know that you are different, okay? I know that you're here because you have something to offer that actually helps people, right? Whether it's a product, whether it's a service, doesn't matter. It helps people, which is why you got into this business, right? Now, you have something to offer that could literally change people's lives, right? I see it every day with my clients. Their lives are forever changed as a result of working with me. That is the goal, right? So what is your product? What is your service? How is it changing people's lives? I know that might sound cheesy, but I know that if you're running a passion-based business, doing something that you love or you desire to start one, then that's what you're selling. You're selling transformation. You are not selling people something that they don't want or need. You are not selling ice to an Eskimo, okay? You are selling something that people actually are really going to benefit from. And so therefore, it's your opportunity and your responsibility, not in a pressured making you feel bad way, but in a, hey, this is a real chance for me to help people change their lives for the better with my thing, with my service, with my offer right? You, whatever you have to offer, chances are it's worked for you, right? I personally know the power of being um, a coach by the right coach, right? I know that the ways it's changed my life. And I also know that as a professor, a former professor, as a former career counselor, I've helped tons of people get that clarity and build successful um, careers, businesses, you know, lives for themselves. So I've seen this work over and over, which is why I'm so passionate about it. What is your answer to that, right? Why are you sold on what you are offering? If we have this internal conflict that like, I love my business, I love everything about my business, I just wish people would come to me, I need to hire out the marketing, I need to hire out the sales part, it would be so great, I'd love to run my business if I didn't have to do the sales, you're never gonna make the money that you want. 
so the opportunity for you is to find a way to sell that feels good, right? So the first thing that we want to do is shift the way that we feel about sales to believing that they can be, um, that they can be completed in a way that feels good to us, that we can sell in a way that feels good to us, not the way we're told to sell, not the way anybody else says it worked for them, so you have to do it too, but designing a process that works for you, which is why you hear me say all the time, my clients sell on every different platform. They sell in, with every different strategy you can possibly imagine because it's about our work together is designing the right strategy for them, helping them with the messaging there, and then getting consistent on that platform with the right amount of offers, ratio versus value, right? Just freaking showing up. So I think another thing to notice is like, where in the process do you feel like you're stopping yourself? Do you feel like you're stopping yourself from even showing up? because this feels so icky, and I'd love to hear your comments um, so I can give you some suggestions around them. Are you not even being visible because it feels so gross, or like you don't even know what to sell, so of course you're not offering anything? Or are you feeling like, well, I know I show up and I engage with people, but I don't ever tell them what I have to offer, or I don't ever ask them if they want to buy it, because they, um, because I'm afraid of how they're going to feel or how it's going to make them feel. Or are you like, I, um, no, I make the offers, but no one ever buys. Which of those things is true for you? Um, depending on your stage of business, depending on your experience, it's going to be different, right? Um, what I want you to start to do is to start to look at this from the inside. We need to get clear on what we are offering and why it's so great and why we're pumped up about it first. And then we need to design a strategy that works for you. I don't care what big guru says it got them to seven figures. May or may not be the right strategy for you. That's a shiny object, right? So catch yourself before you wreck yourself and learn that it's all about designing this in a way that works for you, which is exactly how I work with my clients and exactly what I want for you. So here's the next thing. If you are in a business where you are selling based on personalized conversations, which you probably are at this stage of business, right? Um, meaning like you're selling whatever you have to sell, your service, your thing, um, by talking to people, whether it's talking to them online, whether it's talking to them on the phone, um, it's time to recognize your responsibility in a sales conversation and the, your potential client's responsibility. I think a lot of times one of the reasons that we feel really weird about this is because we think, I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to make them buy something. Guess what? Newsflash. The other person on the other end of that conversation has just as much right to choose as you do. Meaning, you can choose if you want to offer this to them. And you're probably sitting there being like, of course, Christine, I want to offer it to them. I want to offer it to everyone. I want to be you know, a millionaire, right? That's your choice. Your choice is that you want to offer this to them. The other person's choice is that they get to decide whether it's a good fit for them and they get to decide how they're going to pay for it. One of the things that I see a lot is that we get into this story of like, oh, they can't afford it. Oh, I know their situation, especially if it's someone we have a relationship with. I know their situation. I just feel so bad selling this to them. I just, I just feel so bad. Oh, I don't know. Like this feels bad. I think that the people who really need my help can't afford it. I can think that like, I don't want them to feel pressured. Like you got to knock that off because here's the thing. You're never actually standing with a gun to someone's head saying, 
buy this or I'm going to shoot you. But I think a lot of times that's the way we treat it. Like, like as if we have that much power sitting on the phone going, you should buy this thing. I know it's great. It's going to change your life. You can be a hundred percent convinced and relay that in a passionate, confident way to your person and also sit and listen to their thought process as to whether or not it feels like a good time to buy. Now, I know you might be sitting there thinking, well, but, but how do I help them to understand that like this is going to change their life? And we're going to talk about that. But the first thing to really understand, see Isley, wait, Isley, <laughs> down there, um, is that you need to stay in your lane when it comes to sales. Your job is to show up. It is not to force anyone to buy. And frankly, you can't anyway. So stop pretending like you can. <laughs> Take the pressure off. You're literally just having a conversation with someone. And you, when you allow yourself to be excited about what you're selling, genuinely excited, not in a like, this is the best thing since sliced bread, and if you don't buy it, you're stupid, but in a way of like, I know that my clients get fast results when they come to work with me because I know when I work in my zone of genius, they walk away with a clear, simple plan. Every time we talk, every time we email, every single time, they always have that next clear step, right? They always have the one that's right for them and not for someone else. I know they replace their incomes and then some. I know they're going to quit their jobs, right? I know it, I know it, I know it. And I don't care if you have never, if you've never had your first client or customer yet, or you're getting restarted, or you're looking to scale, the first part of it is to just allow yourself to be genuinely excited about it. People sense authenticity. They sense being genuine. They also sense a fake a mile away, right? So does your messaging come across sounding like you? Or does it come across sounding like the person who told you how to sell? Does it come across in your voice or does it come across like you copied and pasted something who you're trying to emulate, right? Someone who you're trying to emulate, something you're trying to emulate. People can feel it. People can tell, right? So when you talk to somebody and, um, and they say, oh, well, I can't because of the money. They're like, I love you, but I can't because of the money. This is a really important thing that I want you to pay close attention to, okay? Money in the society in which we live, meaning first world access to more resources than anyone literally in the history of the world combined. In this situation, hear me. Hear me because I'm a big fan of supporting developing countries um, funding micro loans for women who are in, you know, destitute poverty that most of us will never um, have the opportunity, you know, to experience, have never had, never will, right? I am talking to you sitting where you are, on your smartphone, on your computer, whatever, with access to the internet and all of these things that we're surrounded with. People figure out how to pay for what they value. And you have figured out how to pay for what you value, right? So our society really values a college education. Guess what? We go get student loans and we don't think about it because that's been normalized, okay? When you are selling a product or a, and, it's, and it's justified because it's going to help me get a good job, right? When you are selling something, it's really a matter of the person understanding how it's going to help change their lives more than it is about the money. Let me give you an example. If you want to get in shape so that you can pull a plane like one of my clients did, or you can run a marathon, half marathon, 5K, it was about the level that I stopped running. Um, do an Iron Man like my husband. You do not. Um, you show up and you figure it out. Right? 
if you need to um, change the way that you eat, if you need to change the way that you behave, if you need to change, you know, what you put on your body, if you need to change the way that you move, if you need to change your schedule, right? You show up and you do the work. You are committed to that change and you find a way to make it happen, right? Um, I think that one of the stories that we tell ourselves about sales is that like if somebody gives you the money objection, it's a wah-wah, they're never going to work with you, I'm depressed, this doesn't work, like I'm heading for the fridge. Here's the thing. That may or may not be the actual objection. It more than likely is that they have not connected yet the value of what you have with the problem that they need solved. Because what I know is when we are in enough pain around a problem, we find a way to solve it. That is the high achievers way. I would love to hear some examples from you of the things that you have figured out in your life. Was it that you figured out, you needed to figure out how to go to college and you figured out how to go to college? Was it that you found that house that you really loved and you needed to find a way to come up with the down payment for it and you did it? Was it that you wanted to go on this trip you really wanted to go on this trip and you couldn't figure out how to and then you figured it out. Was it that you really wanted to lose weight, you really wanted to get healthy and you didn't know how to do it and then you figured it out? Most of the time, a lot of the time, we tell ourselves when we get that money objection, oh, wah, 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 right? May or may not be true. They, that is an easily accepted objection in our culture that may or may not be true, okay? Because here's what I know. If someone is like thinking about working with me, thinking about changing their life, thinking about quitting their job, but they haven't decided they're going to do it yet, they're probably gonna say, hey, it's too expensive to work with Christine. Compare that to if someone's for the exact same price as I charge says, you need this surgery. The doctor says, you need this surgery. It's going to cost this much out of pocket for you. But it's going to fix your health. It's going to change your life for the better. Then it's like, great. How do I come up with the money? Where is it for me? Right? Do you see the difference? It's about the belief in what the thing is going to do for you. And so your job in a sales conversation is to show the person that you're talking to why it's valuable. And if you're all up in your head about why it's not valuable, you need to start there. Because it's really hard to sell something you're not completely sold on yourself. Because your job is not to get into, this is the second part of this, your job is not to get into, oh, well, here's how you could pay for it, or have you thought about this, or maybe you could go sell something, or maybe you could get a card, or maybe you could get a loan, or maybe you could ask, blah, 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 blah. No. They are an empowered, first world living human being, and they can figure it out just like you have always figured it out. Okay? They can figure it out just like you have always figured it out. You've always figured it out up to this day. You are 100 for 100 getting the things that you've put your mind to achieving. I know it. You are, of course, in an iteration, of course, on a path, right? Of course, we're always all learning. Of course, of course, of course. We're always tweaking. We're always testing. We're always going to the next level. However, the things that you have really, really wanted in your life, if you have shown up for them fully and you have done whatever it takes to find a way to get them, I bet you have a bunch of examples of how you have done exactly those things, right? So I'd love to hear your examples. I'm going to check the comments. Debbie says, I haven't um, sold this product in uh, seven years. I'm trying again. Debbie, I would encourage you. You are, you are selling. You already are selling. It's not trying. You're selling. You're doing it. You're successful. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Kristen. Hey, Emily. Selling things that contribute to a good cause are excellent. It's a win-win for everyone. Feels great to be successful and feels great to help others. Of course, and also, doesn't matter whether you sell something that's directly like a, 
um, you know, C Corp, like they call it, like, um, like a Tom's or something, or every time you buy a pair of shoes, someone else gets a, a given a pair of shoes. It doesn't matter. If you don't have that, have a give back portion of your um, company, just like I do, right? Have a give back portion of your company. Offer scholarships if you sell service when you can afford to. Not because you feel bad about charging that amount, but because you now have the bandwidth because you've made enough in your business by getting good at sales in a way that feels good, da, 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 to offer that, right? So it can be both. You can have a give back portion. You can have scholarships if you want. You can donate things if you have tangible goods to donate. It, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's about having that intention there. So what questions do you all have for me about selling, about what holds you back, about what keeps you feeling stuck? Because I want to answer them for you. Emily says, how do you help your client fix her own money mindset when she says she can't afford this? Great question, Emily. Great question. I think the thing that I would recommend that you do is help them ask, ask why. As they say, get curious. Don't get stressed about the objection. Get curious as to why she feels she can't afford it. I'm going to share a really per personal, vulnerable example with all of you. When I found my first coach, I knew I wanted to work with her. And I also did not have the money sitting in my account. I decided that this was going to happen before I knew how I was going to pay for it. And I went to my husband and I said, I want to do this. I didn't ask for permission. I said, I want to do this. This is what it's going to help me do. This is my plan. I believed in myself. And I believed that with the right support, I could get the right results that I wanted. And so I went ahead and invested in that program without knowing how I was going to pay for it. And then I showed up and worked my butt off on both the mindset and the strategy to get the results because I, of course, wanted, <laughs> I wanted the results. I wanted to, um, prove myself right. I knew I was capable. I just knew there was something I didn't know or have yet. And that's why I didn't have what I wanted. And I knew that this woman could help me. And so I said, damn it, I am paying for this before I know where the money's going to come from. And I followed through because I had chosen to trust myself and get support for myself at that level. And that raises you to the level of a high achiever <laughs> that maybe you've never been before, right? Maybe you've never fully been there before because you've always let yourself be a little bit wishy-washy about figuring out the things that you really want but that also scare you. Was it scary for me? Yes. Did I show up for it fully because I had said, hey, I'm doing this and I had committed to myself and then I had put skin in the game? Yes. Was it worth it? Would I do it again? 100% yes. Okay, so Emily, I share that story because I want you to know it's not your business to help her figure out where that money is going to come from. It's your business to help her believe that if she wants it, she can't afford it and to help her understand why she feels that way. Not like, oh, let's get out your budget and let's like go through that. I'm not talking about that. She's smart. She can figure this out. Your job is to help her understand why this investment is going to help her get the result that she wants, okay? And why it's going to be worth her investment. Help her understand whether the story she's telling herself is helping her get the result that she wants or if it's keeping her stuck. Here's a great example that I think is really going to help you all see how we tell ourselves these ridiculous stories in one area that are totally illogical. And then in another area, we have no problem showing up and investing. Okay. So I know that for a lot of us, we have health goals, right? Whether it's to lose weight, whether it's to get fitter, 
whether it's to, um, you know, deal with some ongoing chronic condition that we have. And the more frustrated we get about those goals, or the more frustrated we get not having accomplished those goals, or the more pain we're in, physical or psychic, the more likely we are to, um, the more likely we are to do something about it, even if doing something about it is painful. So one of the first ways that I ever invested in myself, and I bet you've done something like this too, was other than like the normal thing that we do after we spend a ton of money to go to school, and in my case, school and grad school, and borrow it. What I did was after my daughter Maeve died, I was cleared for exercise, I was a couple of months postpartum, and also I was still wearing maternity clothes. I hadn't lost the weight that I had gained with her. And I frankly was pissed because it wasn't like I was taking care of a baby and I wasn't sleeping and, you know, breastfeeding around the clock and I didn't have time to take care of myself. I had a dead baby and a body that reminded me of that trauma every freaking day because I was still wearing maternity clothes. And I could not bring myself to go out and buy new clothes that would make me accept this as my new normal. All right? And remind me every day I'm going to buy new clothes because I haven't lost the weight from the baby who died. So I got pissed off enough. Even though this was something I had never done before, I went to a friend of mine who was in an MLM and I had watched her, her transformation with this product, with this health product. And it was not cheap. But I said, she kind of has a body look that looks like mine. She's had kids. She went from looking like this to looking like this. I am going to find a way to pay for this because I believe this could help me too. So, again, not cheap. But I said, you know what? I could dink around and get stuff on Amazon that's not working for me. Or I could say, I'm going to try this for a few months and I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to go all in on it and, and, and this is worth it to me, right? I did not show up saying, I need to lose the weight and then I'm going to buy this thing from her. I showed up and said, I'm going to buy this thing because I believe it's the thing that's going to help me lose the weight and get fit and get my life, you know, get some piece of my life back from this experience, okay? So that's what I did. And guess what? Three weeks later, three weeks later, I had lost the weight. I was back into my pre-pregnancy genes because I showed up and I took it seriously because I had invested. Now, your experience might be like, okay, I hired a personal trainer when I wanted to lose the weight or I hired a health coach when I wanted to lose the weight or I joined the gym when I wanted to lose the weight or, you know, I, I bought these shakes or I went and talked to my doctor and I did this thing and I got these, this program and I committed to it. If you wanted to lose the weight or you wanted to get fit, right? What you didn't do was tell yourself the story, I need to prove that I can lose weight before I show up and do the thing that's going to help me lose the weight, right? You said, I see a thing, I think it's gonna help, this is what I did, I see a thing, I have a friend, it helped her, I think it can help me, I'm gonna pay for it, I believe, I trust myself, I'll show up for it, especially when there's accountability built in, that's the thing that's gonna help me to get the result, all right? So often, and I know some of you watching probably hear this too, so often if you are offering some kind of a service or product, so often the excuse, the objection that I hear is, um, I just need to go make some money in my business and then I'll hire you. That is as backwards as saying, I need to go lose 50 pounds and then I'm gonna get this thing to help me lose 50 pounds. Do you see what I'm saying? And you can take this and apply this to whatever your business is and the result that you help someone get. But for me as a business coach, when I hear someone say, I have no idea how to get clients, I have no idea how to do sales, I have, I'm not being visible, I'm freaked out, I just need to go make some money in my business before I come back and hire you. I'm like, but those things are the reasons that you're hiring me. Those things are the reasons that you're hiring me. I don't think you're going to go out and do it on your own if you're telling me you've been stuck for however long or you have no idea what you're doing. I don't want you to keep spinning your wheels. 
the point of investing is to get those results, right? The point of investing in yourself is to get those results, whether it's to lose weight, whether it's to make money in your business, right? When you show up and you invest in yourself and you give yourself what you need because you trust yourself, that when you give yourself what you need and you have the support and accountability to follow through, you will get the result, then guess what? You get the result, right? But when you tell yourself the story of, oh, I need to go get the result first before I allow myself to invest to get the result, that's fast backwards. And I think it's just such a common like myth story that we tell ourselves that comes from our employee mindset. That is not how entrepreneurs think. Entrepreneurs know it takes investing in themselves first and foremost. And then when they scale, investing in their team, in their systems and structures, in all of those things, but first in order to make a return. But first and foremost, first and foremost, investing in yourself, right? Investing in yourself to get the result that you want. And that is the kind of focus and clarity on the results that you help your clients get that I want for you to be sharing in order to have powerful sales conversations so that you can be making regular 10, um, 10 five figure months. 10 figure months, one day, right? Five figure months, regular five figure months. If you wanna get there, you need to get this freaking sold on exactly why your thing is awesome, on exactly how it helps people, the results that it helps them get, and you need to be in your power and in your lane about the, about the belief that they can figure out how to pay for it if they want it bad enough. I see it all the time, all the time. Clients who come to me going, I really wanna work with you, I just need to figure it out, guess what, they do, every single time. Clients who come really attached to a story about how they can't afford it and how that's ruling their life and that means that they're not allowed to have anything that they want, that is exactly what they continue to perpetuate for themselves. So what if you showed up for the thing that you know you want right now, even if you don't know how you're gonna pay for it? What if you looked for creative solutions, right? What if you said, how am I going to? Instead of, I wish I could, but I can't, right? You've probably heard me say this before if you've been hanging around for very long. Let me know what questions you have about that, but also recognize that if you're telling yourself that story, you're probably going to be talking to people who have the exact same story. Like attracts like, right? So if you're telling yourself, I can't, and you're in this place of like total dejection, guess who you're going to be talking to as well? Like attracts like. And when you when they say that, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, feels true. As opposed to, no, I'm selling this thing, I am selling my services because I know it's change, it changes lives and I know you can figure it out. That allows them to raise to the level of a woman who can, right? If you get into their excuses and into their story with them, guess what you're helping them do? Stay stuck. Because you're saying, I don't believe that you can figure this out. I believe that where you are today is exactly where you're going to stay. And guess what? Guess what? That's not what you're in the business of doing. So stop doing that in your sales conversations. Start believing in them. Start believing in possibility. Start believing in their ability to figure it out and help them see that too. Because that immediately changes things for them. They go from being an employee who's just being told what to do, being told what's right, being told what's wrong, to actually determining their own values and saying, how do I wanna show up in this world? What do I believe about money? What do I believe about investing in myself? What do I feel is the next right thing for me to do right now, to grow my business, to get whatever result that you have, right? How do I wanna show up for that? I check the comments. Kristen says, brilliant, fully agree, so true, yes, awesome. It's one of the most powerful stories I've heard about Maeve. Oh, thank you, Kristen. I have one on YouTube where I tell my entire stillbirth story. It's one of the more popular videos on my YouTube channel. You can check that out there if you 
want to hear more about her. Um, but I'm glad that resonated with you. Emily says, yes, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, you all, here's the thing. Take this to your sales conversations. If you're watching this live, it's Friday afternoon here. I want you to take this and I want you to get clear on your results with what you're offering and I want you to go sell them now, right? I want you to go offer them now. I want you to reach out to the people you know you could help. I want you to be visible. I want you to show up. I want you to offer to get on the phone. I want you to have these conversations and sit with them as they figure out that the story they've been telling themselves is not helpful, right? I want you to show up consistently. I want you to be making big sales. I want you to have five figure months or whatever that next milestone is, your first 1K month, your first 1K in your business, your first 5K in your business, whatever that is. And I want you to do it in a way that feels good because that is where you're going to succeed. Tell me what questions you have around sales as they relate to what you have and your struggles in your business right now. Tell me, tell me, tell me in the comments. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Listen, this is something that I work with all of my clients on. Helping them to develop the money mindset of a successful entrepreneur and also helping them to empower their leads to buy from them. I would love to help you with this too. If you've been staying stuck in sale in this, all the reasons why not, or I'm bad at sales, I hate sales, everything in my business would be great if I didn't have to do sales. I don't know how to find people. I'm afraid they won't like me. I'm afraid I'll be pressury. I'm afraid I'll be salesy. La, 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 la. Please, please, please stop telling yourself that story because what you have to offer and what you have to sell matters. I know it does. That's why you're here. And I also know that you're freaking capable of doing it, that you are completely capable of selling your thing, replacing your income, and then some in a way that feels good. So please stop telling yourself a story that isn't helping you get what you want. And please know that you are capable. All of us need support at certain times in building our businesses, every single one of us. And if you want to talk about whether my support is right for you to help you do sales in a way that feels good, let's chat. Because what I know for sure to be true, like you've heard me say, is that often telling ourselves a story, we need to go out and make money in our business before we can hire a coach to help us make money in our business, keeps us in an endless loop. We look up in six months and we're like, well, I'm still in the exact same spot. I see it all the time. It breaks my heart, right? Because you told yourself you're not allowed to have the thing that you know you need, right? So if you know you need some help with sales, if you know you need some help with visibility, if you know you need some help with getting even clear on the results that you're offering so that you can get that confidence, right? You can get that confidence to show up and sell consistently to people who buy from you over and over and over, then let's chat. You can book a 30 minute call, just you and me, I'm gonna put the link in the comments where we're gonna talk about your issues, your business, and how I can help you to grow it fast, right? Not fast in a get rich quick scheme kind of way, but fast in a way that you can only really get from having someone come alongside you, get their hands dirty with you in your business and help you plug the holes, help you anticipate issues, help you solve those things that have been keeping you stuck in record time because they've seen it a hundred times before. I guarantee you that whatever you're struggling with is not something I haven't seen before. It's not something that I can't help you with. And if it is, I'll tell you <laughs> and I'll probably have a recommendation of someone else you can talk to. All right, here is the link to book a call with me. Kristen says you, you saw the video. Awesome. And that's how you first found me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Not with clients yet, but with my suppliers asking questions about whether they have a copyright on their product. He wants me to buy his company. 
okay. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know the, um, I don't know your situation, Kristen, so I wouldn't dare to give you advice on that without, without knowing more. Definitely um, something to do a deep dive on, you know, in a half day intensive or something like that. Um, but um, I am really a big fan of bootstrapping and building your business from the ground up so that you build it exactly on your terms. That is what I'm passionate about. And that is um, what allows you to become really, really good at every part of the process along the way um, without the pressure of dealing with, um, with stepping into other people's stuff, frankly. Gives you the most freedom, um, in my opinion, and in what I have seen be super, super successful for my clients. So your big takeaways today are Notice the stories that you're telling yourself about what you believe around the definition of sales. If you're telling yourself sales is gross and it's hard, then that's exactly what you're going to experience and you're going to avoid it because it's uncomfortable and you don't like it. If you're telling yourself this could be fun, I can find a way to make this fun. Maybe Christine can help me make it fun for me and my business. Then that's exactly what you're going to create as well, right? Because ultimately, when we're running our own businesses, it's so important to know that what we're telling ourselves is what we wind up experiencing. And I know that might sound really crazy if you haven't thought about that or really um, sat with that before, but it's true, right? So the stories that you tell yourself around sales being hard or gross or them having to look a certain way, you can change that immediately right now. You can think about the people who you've bought from and if you bought from them because they made you feel small and they bullied you into buying, or if you bought from them because they helped you to see what was possible and helped you to believe that you were the kind of person who could benefit from this product, right? That it was your choice and that you were invited. It was your choice and you were invited. Same thing I'm doing right here, right? You can book a call with me it's your choice and you're invited. I know I can help you. Your job is to meet me and talk about the hows, right? And talk through what's going on for you and talk through your situation and make a decision that's right for you. And it is the exact same thing with how you work with each of your clients, customers, anybody you deal with in your business. This is the key, right? Show up. Yes, be of service, like everyone says, but also be very, very clear on how you want to help people, how you can help people, how you believe you're going to help people, the results you want to help people get. Help them feel like you're in their head because you know them and their problems so well. And yeah, this is, this is pre-work before you get on a sales call, before you write messaging, but it makes sense the entire rest of the process so much smoother and easier because you're not worried about what you're going to say. You're not worried about trying to convince them one way or the other. You're holding out the opportunity and you're holding the space for them to transform their lives and to solve that problem that they have right now with your help. That's the whole game, my friends. Now, if you have questions about this, drop them in the comments. I will come back and answer them for you. If you want to talk to me about getting my help to do sales and build your whole business in a way that feels good and in record time because you're not doing it on your own anymore and you're ready to show up for yourself in that way to get the results you've been wanting, book that clarity call with me. We'll have a chat and I'll help you determine your next right steps. Have a wonderful weekend. If you're watching this live, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Go out and sell.